Moi, je n'appelle tout l'homme company limited audited financial position à sa 31st December 2023. We had our AGM on the 16th of August 2024 and considered the 2023 audited financial statement of the group, which revealed an excellent performance. Being the first fruit of the PIA, the commitment of the board, management and staff of the company, thus leading to the attainment of 3.3 trillion profit after tax for 2023 financial year. Accordingly, the shareholders of the company have approved a final dividend of 2.3, I mean 2.1 trillion in line with the provision of PIA 2021. The CFO of the group we present to you details of our financial performance for the year. I now call on uh, our CFO, Chief Financial Officer, Umar Ajia, to come on stage and tell us how much we have earned, how much we have been able to accumulate over the years. Thank you. Welcome to this uh, uh, briefing with respect to our 2023 audited financial statements. It's actually a reflection of our TAP agenda. Uh, we had made commitment right from 2019 when we uh, stepped in we under the leadership of Mr. Mele Gary to ensure transparency, accountability, and performance excellence. And to that extent, we had also enrolled ourselves into NAETI and EITI to ensure that we do not hide anything for anyone, not to talk of Nigerians who own this company. So today, we are going to share with your good selves the summary highlights of the 2023 results that this company has been able to achieve. It is a reflection of the sheer hard work and commitment of our board, management, and staff of NMPC who have toiled day and night to ensure that uh, this company remains sustainably on a growth path trajectory and that the profit is growing from year to year. At the end of the uh, briefing, uh, we will make this uh, public through our website so that all Nigerians can have access to it. Uh, but first of all, when you look at the performance of this company uh, from 2019 to date, we have never looked backwards. It's always forward. The company, when we took over, was a loss-making corporation. And PIA came into being, and it became a karma company. We broke even at the end of 2019. And by 2020, we had produced the first profit ever for this company, which is 287 billion naira. The following year in 2021, the company's profit grew to 674 billion naira. By the third year, in 2022, the profit jumped to 2.5 trillion naira. Of course, in that year, we also had the JV assets transferred from the corporation to us as part of our take-off assets. Now, in 2023, the profit has also grown by 28%, from 3.5 trillion to 3.297 trillion naira. Similarly, on the asset side, next slide. On the asset side, in 2019, we were literally holding an asset base of 8 trillion naira, which slightly moved to 9.5 trillion in 2020. But by 2021, following the movement of the JV assets to the company, the assets 
non-current assets grew to 15.3 trillion naira. And by 2022, that, that's the, the resulting from investments, but then the transfer of the assets in 2022 saw us grow from 15.3 trillion to 37 trillion naira of assets. And that has doubled in 2023, uh, resulting from investments and translation difference. We are expected to produce our financial statements in dollars and translate it into Naira. And that's uh, what has been happened in, in 2023. So when you look at the key hi summary highlights on the next slide, uh, no, on the next slide also, uh, it shows, yes, come back to, no, go back to the highlights. 2023, highlights. We had a 23.9 trillion naira revenue or turnover, which resulted in a gross profit of 7 trillion, a net operating profit of 4.3 trillion, and profit before tax of 5.9. Consequently, we ended the year with 3.297 trillion naira as profit after tax. On the asset side, because of a sizable amount of receivables, uh, the total assets position stood at 246 trillion naira. Uh, of course, uh, the same when we look at the second other side of the balance sheet, uh, total liabilities equate to the same. In terms of cash and bank holding, at the end of the year, we had 7.7 .7 trillion naira in the banks. An interim dividend paid during the year was 536 billion naira. So this were amounts that we used to pay every month into the Federation account. Final dividend was declared last Friday by the shareholders, amounting to 2.1 trillion naira net of uh, tax, portfolio tax. A net profit margin for the group is at 14 percent, while the operating profit, operating profit margin stood at 18 percent. Now, how does this look in real sense when we say earnings per share? Remember, we have a, a 200 uh, billion shares, and so when it comes to earnings per share, 16.49 naira per share. And in terms of dividend per share, it stands at 11 point, 11 era point, uh, one, point 11 whole. Of course, you know the dividend payout for the company is already enshrined in the law, in the PIA, it's 80% payout. It's a matter of compliance. And the return on equity is at 12%. And current ratio, that, uh, which shows our ability to settle our current the liabilities uh, is at one one. So it means we have sufficient near liquid assets to settle our current liabilities. 100%. In terms of debt to assets, it's literally 1.8%. So long term survival of the company is assured. It's unlikely to pass when you, as a corporation. We had to get a going concern sustainability letter from the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources. It's no longer the case. Next slide shows you come back, sorry, to government take. So in totality in 2023, uh, we will say that the government, all types of government, the government take from this company of yours stood at 8.6 trillion now. 537 billion naira has been paid as interim dividend. There is now 2.1 trillion naira dividend finally declared for payment. We also have royalties paid from our own operations of 2.15 trillion. 
We also have taxes, levies, and statutory deductions amounting to 2.6 trillion naira. And also assets under management uh, by way of uh, PSC uh, and 40% uh, profit on PSCs as well as royalty on PSC uh, production. Those PSC assets still belong to the Federation, they don't belong to NMPC, but we are obligated to pay 40% of the PSC profit into Federation accounts. And similarly, all associated uh, royalties, uh, and also pay 30% into the Frontier uh, Exploration Fund account of 30%, where we retain 30% uh, under management. So it is really untrue for anyone to say NMPC has not been remitting anything into the Federation account. This is 2023. But you know, uh, sometimes our uh, principals, uh, they know what we are doing. Our shareholders know what we are doing. Uh, it's not every issue that is out there in the social media that we have to respond to. Next slide, to clarify and to get it, uh, very, make it very clear. Uh, we've seen also information out there that the company is over leverage, that is far, far from true. The borrowings we have made so far by this company has been as outstanding as at, at the end of 2023, uh, about five in number. Two of which have also been fully repaid uh, this year. We took a billion dollar from Africa Bank to rehabilitate Quarter Park Refinery. That is still ongoing and drawdowns are happening. And that goes exclusively to payment of invoices to the contract of taking amount under an escrow scheme arrangement. Secondly, we borrowed a billion dollars just to ensure that the Tangote refinery also continues uh, its production, uh, its construction activity on Hinder uh, with the desire to take 20% equity. But subsequently, both of us, NMPC and Dangote, agreed to scale down and take the equity step that is equivalent to our $1 billion. So that $1 billion was paid directly to Dangote Industries Limited. It didn't even come to NMPC's uh, coffers. And uh, that debt has also been fully repaid as of June this year. Gazelle which is the subject of so much discussion in the media, was at the instance of the Federation. And this had net approval, we borrowed 3.3 billion. And that money was credited directly to the CBN's account with African Bank. This Federation money is not for NMPC. We will use Federation borrowers to settle that debt. And that repayment has commenced. Eagle 2 is ready for our upstream company, NAPL, based in Benin, a 950 million dollar, which uh, uh, was targeted to uh, for them to invest and increase production. And so that one is also under uh, under uh, repayment at the moment. Final one was Brooks, which was a 300 million dollar facility. We borrowed. And we acquired OML 86, 88, 45% equity in those assets. And so those two assets are on 100% today by NMPC. And that loan has also been fully repaid. So when we hear that uh, the company has pledged all the barriers, uh, that is far from truth. Today, the company is producing an average of 1.7 million barrels per day, of which about a million barrels belong to uh, NMPC and Federation. And from that, when we take out the barrels we pledge here and the barrels that are used for cash flow, we do have enough barrels to satisfy domestic refineries 
as long as they can produce PMS for Nigerians to consume. So we do not have to import. Next slide. I will stop here, uh, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we will entertain some questions and then we will also make the accounts available in the website. Thank you very much. For the uh, non compliance uh, uh, story out there, is because we don't talk, we don't speak. Uh, in the past, we're a corporation, we probably as a camera company, we have a responsibility to also ensure that we operate within the governance practices of a camera company. We have shareholders, we have board. Uh, typical camera companies, even press releases, they have to be cleared with the board or sometimes even the shareholders before you make such type of statement. So we do not want to take uh, uh, every issue that is uh, said out there, but I think what we have learned our lessons now from time to time, we should be having this kind of uh, media engagement with the chief executive and members to ensure that the public is aware of what this company is doing so that we can actually uh, uh, try to clear out any falsehood that has been spread. In terms of revenue flows, yes, clearly indeed, uh, Mr. Cardoso was here himself, which is uh, deputy governors, and we agreed to work uh, uh, collaboratively uh, to ensure that when we bank with a bank, and when we say pay, that that banker will pay, that wasn't the practice before him. So he has assured us that he will do that. And because of that, we have mandated all our, our inflows to move uh, to CBN, and he has created a specific desk to address our payment uh, instructions as and when we send them to Central Bank. Of course, the dollar inflows that come uh, to improve uh, uh, is, uh, foreign reserves, is, as it comes in, it is also that effect that we use to pay cash costs and also pay for the PMS we're importing because we sell the PMS in Naira to Nigeria, so we have to have dollar to pay for that. Uh, lastly, I think uh, my colleague, the EBQ option, will talk to you in detail on the production, but the reality is that 1.7 includes condensed. Thank you very much. Last eight or nine years, this company, even corporation as it were, has not paid anybody a dime or one naira as subsidy. No one has been paid COBO by an NPC as in the name of subsidy. That means uh, no marketer has received money from us by way of subsidy. What has been happening is that we've been importing PMS, landing at a certain price, at a cost price, and government is telling us to sell it at half price. So the delta between that landed price and the half price is what we call shortfall, or we call it subsidy. And the deal is between Federation and ourselves to reconcile and sometimes they give us money, sometimes we do net offers. So there is no money exchanging hands to any marketer or anybody in the, way, in the name of subsidy. Uh, with respect to debt, we are in a business, this is the worldwide commercial norm. Trade credit lines are prevalent in this type of uh, downstream business. Just like we give LCs, and marketers also give LCs when they are lifting our food. So we also have what we call open credit. Open credit, somebody will give it to you on credit for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, even 180 days, or whatever. It is at the expression of that period that you pay that relevant supply. So similarly, we also sell to other people on open credit in the past, but now it's cash and carry for PMS. So with the people who are supplying, traders supplying this country PMS, we have such open credit lines agreed with them. And uh, we owe them, yes, but we have 
timelines agreed for the payment. And that's why I say we're using our FX liquidity to pay as and when. Uh, the exact figure is not what they are putting in the media, but my colleague EVP downstream is here. He will shed more light on what is uh, happening on that side.